start with a little audience participation. How many of you know somebody that has had problems with the healthcare system or has a healthcare problem? Raise your hand. Diabetes. Keep it up. Heart disease. High blood pressure. Asthma. Cancer. Put your hand down. If you would, think about them for a few minutes actually for the next 15 minutes. We're going to go on a journey. We're going to think about what it would be like to walk in their shoes just for the next 15 minutes. Think about the problems that they experience, the pain, the depression, the lack of being able to do all the things that they'd like to do, and think about their caregivers, the people who love them and care for them, and their experiences, the challenges that, that, that they have based on the fact that this person that they love could be you, could be a grandmother, it could be a child, about the problems that they're experiencing. There are a lot of problems in healthcare, big, big problems. So let's talk about those. Costs. Our health care system costs way, way too much. In 2010, it was estimated that we spent about 2.76 billion with a B dollars on health care. In 2016, those costs are expected to rise to 3.62 billion dollars. Healthcare costs spending represent almost 18 percent of our GDP today. So that means that 18 cents of every dollar that we spend on anything in this country goes to pay for health care. What if we could spend just a small portion of that on innovation? on research, on education, on feeding the people that are hungry in our own country and possibly even abroad. Think about what we could do if we could save just a little of that money. Chronic conditions. Almost everybody in this room raised their hand saying they know someone who has some kind of chronic condition. And that's not surprising because chronic conditions impact nearly one in two Americans. Twenty-five percent of the people that have a chronic condition have a significant impact on their life based on that chronic condition. And chronic conditions represent 75 percent of all of our health care spending. Transitions in care. When people move from one care setting to the next, things can and often do go wrong. What's a care setting? It's home to the hospital. It's high school to college. It's home to nursing home. It's hospital to nursing home. And we're doing a really, really bad job of caring for people during those transitions. So bad, in fact, that 2.37 million, or 20% of people who were admitted to the hospital were readmitted within 30 days. Now you might say, well, people need to go back to the hospital. Well, yeah, sometimes they do. But it's estimated that 76% of the time, they shouldn't have had to. Nobody wants to go back unless there's a problem. And that 76% that had to go back in 30 days that were unnecessary readmissions cost Medicare about 17.4 billion, again with a B, dollars in 2004. So the solution, it's innovation. That's how we're gonna fix our healthcare system. We're gonna innovate. 
We're going to come up with new ways of doing things better, cheaper, faster, in a way that's going to help the people that we love feel better about their experience with healthcare. Someday it's going to be one of us. Let's innovate for health. So now, keeping that person in the back of your mind that's struggled with healthcare and the healthcare system, let's imagine what a community could look like that's caring for them in a way that respects them and provides them with the tools and resources that they need to get better. Let's imagine Cincinnati. Let's imagine Cincinnati. Let's imagine that we live in a community where our health and the health of our friends, our family, our neighbor, where we have access to the right doctors, the right medication, the right tools and resources at the right time. And what would that look like? Let's talk about what a health innovation ecosystem is. The best representation that I could find as it relates to biology is a pond. A lot of times that's taught in whatever, bi whatever grade biology begins to be taught in, right? A pond is a great example of an ecosystem. You have to have all the right elements at the right time, and then the, the pond actually comes to life. So you have the right amount of algae and the right amount of fish and the right amount of water, the right amount of nutrients and minerals, right? And that needs to be protected. And once you get all the right stuff in there, then it just comes to life. So let's talk about what the right elements are that we need in Cincinnati to create this health innovation ecosystem. First, I'm going to tell you about what the goals are, though, of Innovate for Health. And they may surprise you. Improve health probably doesn't. But what does health care and health have to do with attracting and retaining top talent or creating jobs. Hmm. Just think, if we could reduce our health care costs in this community and improve the quality of the care that's delivered, we believe that we can create a competitive economic advantage for Cincinnati. Why? Because if GE Aviation and P&G aren't spending 18 cents of every dollar on health care, they can spend a little bit of that on something else. Innovation, research, more jobs, right? Innovation creates jobs. New products, new product launches, that's what we're going to do with innovation in this community. And as we can help the companies that are here to become more productive, they have the ability to hire more people. And that allows us to keep the people that are coming out of our universities. We know we have a brain drain here. We want to keep the brilliant minds that are coming out of Xavier and coming out of UC in Cincinnati. But the other thing we have to do is we've got to make it cool here. <laughs> we have to make it really a little bit cooler to live here. And there's a lot of work that's being done in our community to do that. We've got a project in Over the Rhine. We've got a project on Short Vine. And so innovation supporting startup companies and attracting startup companies and the people that run startup companies to this community and supporting the people that want to have startup companies in this community also helps us to attract and retain top talent and it also creates jobs. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of how that works. Okay, so now what are the elements for this health innovation ecosystem? We need to get key stakeholders engaged in this idea of innovating for health. We need the universities, the employers, the startup community, healthcare, and of course we need investors. Plus, some way to identify, incentivize, and support the innovators in this community. Community-wide events help to provide milestones that give people something to work for. So with Innovate for Health, we've got three community-wide events to serve as milestones, things to work for, an idea expo, a business concept expo, and a startup showcase. And at each of those events, cash prizes are offered, 
There's exposure to employers, potential investors, and even other innovators that, where you can collaborate. And then, of course, support to continue the development of your idea into something that hopefully will, will result in a startup company. So far, through the Innovate for Health initiative, we have distributed over $40,000 across two events. We've impacted over 40 different teams, infused a little bit of cash, and definitely given them a lot of exposure to continue to develop their ideas into business concepts. Plus, we need to accelerate. We want to accelerate this process. Innovation is, um, it, there's not really a time frame exactly that you can put on it, but if we have more resources, as Todd said earlier, as well as Dr. Sharma said earlier, if we have more resources, then we can innovate more quickly. So, as part of the Innovate for Health initiative, we have an accelerator, a startup accelerator. It's a 12-week intensive mentoring program with significant support to help to find investors for follow-on investment. And what does that look like? It's focused on health, health IT for the accelerator, specifically on health IT. And money. So we need the community working together as the, the, the innovative ecosystem architecture and infrastructure. And we need to have funds for the teams. So the state of Ohio has granted the Innovate for Health nonprofit organization $160,000 to fund eight teams at $20,000 a piece for that 12-week program. So what is this equal? Support for your startup, for your idea. So as you are imagining the problems and challenges that your friends and loved ones have faced in their healthcare journeys, and you've thought about some solutions that you might be able to come up with to help them, well, we're giving you a place to actually make those ideas a reality. And that's through the Innovate for Health initiative. So you may be asking, why is the, now the right time to be a health IT startup? I know the students here, you guys are some of the best of the best in the country. Our entrepreneurship programs in Cincinnati are some of the best in the entire country. And you can do all kinds of things. You can do consumer branding, you could do financial services, you can do engineering. So why would you consider health and healthcare? And why now? And I'll tell you why. Our environment has changed today. I get asked that question a lot, actually, and I get asked it by investors who say, why should I invest in you and what it is that you're doing? The guy from Yahoo, this happened to me just the other day, the person who started Yahoo, he's invested millions of dollars in healthcare and he can't fix it, or I'll get, you know, that Google Health thing, that Google Health personal health record. Google couldn't do it, so why do you think you can do it? And what I'd say is, is because our environment is different today than it was a year ago, two years ago, and absolutely four years ago. And it's because it's gotten so bad that finally people are like, we have got to fix it. And so there's a significant amount of funding and resources that are being put into health innovation. They're calling it healthcare transformation. In one program, and there are multiple programs, but in one program through the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, and I'll, I'll tell you, for those of you that have been in healthcare, Medicaid, Medicare, innovation, they usually didn't go together. <laughs> but now they do. There's a whole Center for, Medi for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, and there are $10 billion, $10 billion with a B, dollars available from 2011 to 2019 for testing of innovative ideas that will improve the health and reduce the cost of Medicare, Medicaid, and CHIP lives. And CHIP just is a, it's a program to help for um, children related to health and health care. So there's $10 billion that are out there for the taking in federal funds. Why Cincinnati? It's because of the resources again. 
We may, be, 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 we may be behind in some areas in Cincinnati, but we certainly are not in the area of health IT and healthcare in general. Our community collaborates across healthcare. We've got multiple organizations that are working together to improve the health of our community. We have the most advanced health IT infrastructure in the entire country. And we've got significant opportunities and initiatives going on around healthcare quality and improvement. Another reason is because we have money now that's been allocated to Cincinnati. And not just a little bit of money, a lot of money. It was recently announced that Cincinnati primary care providers were awarded a grant that will come in the form of extra funding for those primary care practices, for those practices that are seeing Medicaid, Medicare patients that could amount to about $250 million. And then we have $50 million across the other programs, like the Beacon Communities Initiative, as well as um, some funding from Bethesda. So there's a lot of money in this community that's being put into health innovation. So what's missing? Let's think about that for just a minute. So think about that person that you love. Think about their caregiver. Think about what you could do to make a difference. And then think about what may be missing in all this that we've said. We've got the resources, we have the funding, we've got the IT infrastructure. And what we believe at Innovate for Health is what's missing is you. We need you. We need every person in this community, or at least those of you that are courageous enough and tenacious enough to say, I'm willing to do things differently. I'm willing to work with other people in this community to improve health and health care.